Hello, I'm Imogen Heap. I'm a recording artist, performer, musician, composer, mother, lots of things really. But where I get really excited is where music and technology meet, that special intersection. About 10 years ago, I started a project that we now call the Mimu Gloves. The Mimu Gloves allow me, while I'm in the studio or touring around the world, to be able to reach into my laptop reach into my computer and all of the fun software that I love to be able to paint music in the sky, on the move, wirelessly. It's really an amazing feeling. So here today, we're gonna do a little lesson where we can have a small taste of that with the Mini Mew Gloves, which we developed about a couple of years ago. So here we are. Welcome to the Open UK Mini Mew Lessons. This is lesson one, and it's called the Jingle Glove. You can start and stop this video at each step if you need more time to keep up with the lesson. Amanda has a problem to solve. She desperately wants to dance and perform music on the stage, but cannot play a musical instrument. She has discovered this mini Mew glove and wants some help building and coding it to play music while she dances. In today's lesson, you will help Amanda. By doing this, you will learn how to sew together your mini Mew glove, how to assemble it and attach your BBC micro bit, flashing your first program to the glove, using a simple event handler to detect when the glove moves, and how to play a jingle of notes using sequences of instructions. You will also learn a little bit about what source code is. You will need a mini Mew glove kit and BBC micro bit, and access to the Make Code web coding editor. And don't forget a pair of scissors too. OK, so let's open the box and see what's inside and tick off our contents list together as we take each item out. A blue felt template for the glove. This is handy as it's already marked out ready to cut. A BBC micro bit that you can load your program code into. A battery pack and a set of batteries to power your micro bit. A speaker to make the sound. And this is a special speaker because it's sewable. Three crocodile clips for making connections, a USB cable to connect the micro bit to your computer for flashing new program code to it, a reel of thread to sew the glove together with, and wait, what's inside this little brown envelope? It's a set of needles of different sizes to sew with. That'll be handy. Try not to lose them as they're quite small. Oh, and there's a lovely poster with full instructions on how to build your glove too. First, let's practice with sewing before making the glove. Unthread and cut a length of thread about as long as your arm. Thread it through the eye of the needle and pull it so that both ends line up. Finally, tie a little knot in the end. Poke the needle carefully through the felt just under the Mini Mew glove name and poke it back to the other side again a few millimetres further along. Do this a few times, then cut the thread off with your scissors. Feel free to practice this running stitch a few times on a corner of the felt until you're happy with the neatness of your stitch. Now it's time to cut out the pattern of the glove. Choose the size by holding your hand against the felt and choose the size that is a little bit bigger than your hand. Carefully cut around the dotted lines with the scissors and cut out two halves of the glove and the two pockets. Thread your needle like before with a new piece of thread, which probably needs to be as long as your arm to be long enough without getting tangled. And remember to knot it. Hold together the two sides of the glove with the print facing out and use your running stitch all along the edge. When you're done, loop the thread through the gloves a couple of times and cut it off with the scissors and unfold it like a butterfly. Next, let's stitch the pockets and these go on the non-printed side of your glove with the print facing inwards. Use your running stitch again. You may have to sew them in separate runs, but check back to the poster if you get stuck. Don't sew all the way around, otherwise you won't be able to use the pockets. To finish off the glove, fold the two butterfly wings back together again and stitch along the other side and tie off again. Finally, sew the little V shape at the top, but be careful not to sew the thumb hole closed. Does it look like a glove yet? 
Well, imagine it is like a sock and turn it inside out and there is your glove. Hopefully it holds together, but if it comes a bit loose when you try to wear it, there should be plenty of spare thread to stitch it together a little bit more. Now that you have sewn your glove together, let's wire it up. Oh, but wait a minute, there's a bit more sewing to do. Sew a few loops through the four holes of the speaker to attach it to the bottom of the glove on the same side as the micro bit pocket. Don't forget to check your poster if you need help. Slot the micro bit into its pocket and attach the three crocodile clips between the micro bit and the speaker. Nought goes to nought, three volts goes to three volts and ground goes to ground. Well done! Finally, put the batteries into the battery box and slot it into its pocket on the palm side of the glove. You may need to put a couple of stitches in the corner to hold the battery in place. Run the red and black battery wire over the glove V and plug it into the white connector at the top of the micro bit. It only fits one way round. You now need some code loaded onto the micro bit to test that it all works. Let's start with a really simple program that just beeps when you turn the micro bit on. Go to makecode.microbit.org and choose the new project button. In front of you, you will see a simulated micro bit on the left, a palette of commands in the middle, and a programming area on the right. It's not much different from Scratch, really. You might have used that before. In the music palette, find a play note block and drag it and slot it into the blue on start block. Well, that's your program done. Let's get it onto your micro bit now. Transferring code to the micro bit is called flashing. This is because the memory inside the micro bit that stores your program is called flash memory. Plug the USB cable into your micro bit and plug the other end into your computer. After a few seconds, a micro bit drive appears in your file manager. Press the download button from the make code editor and it will download a hex file that contains the runnable version of your program. Don't worry, we will learn more about hex files in a later session. Finally, find out where on your computer this hex file has downloaded to and drag and drop it onto the microbit drive. If you get a bit stuck with this, there is a short video on the microbit.org website called Transfer Your Program at this web address microbit.org slash get hyphen started slash first hyphen steps slash set hyphen up slash To finish off, let's get your microbit playing a little jingle so that Amanda can get dancing on the stage with her new glove. To do this, you will need to use an event handler. This is a piece of code that senses when something happens on the micro bit and runs a piece of code that you slot into it. In the input palette, find the on shake block and drag and drop it into the programming area. A program can be told to do one thing after another thing, and this is called a sequence. Music is very much the same. One note plays after another note. And if those notes are in the right order, a nice jingle plays. You can use predefined jingles from the music palette if you want, but let's write our own jingle. Amanda particularly likes Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, and that's quite easy to program. The notes you need are C, C, G, G, A, A, G, and use a one beat note. Can you slot all those notes in the right order into the on shake block now? You can try the code in the simulator on the left if you want by pressing the little shake circle in the top right of the simulated micro bit. Finally, can you remember how to flash new code onto your micro bit? You did it a little earlier. Remember you can check back at the microbit.org website video if you need a reminder. Now, turn on your glove by sliding the switch on the battery pack to the on position and give it a shake. You should hear your first part of Twinkle Twinkle Little Star playing through the speaker. Well done! You have assembled your glove and written a program that plays a jingle when you shake it. Let's finish off by thinking a bit about what open source is. 
Well, before we can understand what open source is, we need to ask what source is. Source refers to source code, which is the list of instructions written by people that tell computers how to do certain tasks. So inside make code, it's the colored blocks you slotted together on the programming area that make up a source code. If you provide that source code to others and give them permission to use it and modify it, then it's open source. You might already use lots of open source programs on your computer. Can you name a few of them? A lot of open source was used in creating this video lesson series for you. The make code editor is open source. Most of the programs that make the micro bit work are open source. We even used an open source word processor to write the scripts for this video series. Okay, so that's the end of the lesson for now. Don't forget to experiment with on shake and play note on your micro bit glove and make it play longer tunes. And we'll see you at the next lesson. Bye for now.